<laughs> hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, Pianists Through the Ages. Now the camera's on. Good to see you guys. We are back uh, after a week of our usual time of a week off in between concerts. Um, I'll be here all night, folks. Um, my name is Stephen Locken Fifeke. I'm Alexa Quarantino. And behind us, Emiliano Washansky. <laughs> and um, oh, right. we, that's the one, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was trying to think of something earlier. Emiliano's middle name is Zapatos. And I, Zapata. Zapata, sorry. And I was trying to think of like, uh, is there a hand sanitizer brand that's like <laughs> sanit sanitize Washansky's? Okay, see. Like can I get a can I get a ba -dum -tsh. All right, guys. Well, we're here tonight to play a concert of pianists through the ages. Um, I've picked uh, a couple of uh, my favorite pianists and composer pianists and uh, arranger pianists that we will feature throughout the night. But I felt that it would be fitting to start with um, some stride piano um, in the trio format, featuring Emiliano and Alexa. And this is a song composed by Fats Waller, who was one of the first um, practitioners of the stride piano style. The reason it's called stride piano is that the left hand of the pianist plays the bass notes and then also the chords. And when you do that fast, it looks like the piano player is going for a walk with their hands, going for a stride. Um, so, uh, and a bit more history really quickly is that stride piano has roots in ragtime. So coming out of players and composers like Scott Joplin, for example. Um, and while Fats Waller is one of the most famous, he is not the only person. Art Tatum is another person that comes to mind. Uh, he used this style and is extremely famous for this. So with all that said, we'd like to dedicate this first a uh, song tonight to uh, one of our frequent flyer participants, uh, fr frequent flyer mile <laughs> watchers. Uh, this one goes out to Kevin Hogue. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Kevin, and for your gold sponsorship. Uh, without further ado, here is Ain't Misbehavin' by Fats Waller. Enough. <laughs>
Thank you so much. Hello, everybody. We are so happy to be here with you on another Sunday. We hope you had a great Thanksgiving holiday. And uh, here we are back again. So we are going to move on now with a piece by Duke Ellington. This is called Don't Get Around Much Anymore. (laughs) Don't Get Around (laughs) Much Anymore. And this is for Gold Sponsor, another frequent flyer mile attendee. The Zaffitz family, thank you so much. We appreciate you, and we hope you enjoy this Duke Ellington classic. Thank you. 
Alexa found her read. And uh, who gives you your reads? Van Doren. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks, Van Doren. Um, got a good one. Got a good one. <laughs> she found a good one. So um, Duke Ellington was really well known as a pianist, but he was also really well known as a big band leader, arranger, orchestrator. And that song is actually, it was first known as Concerto for Cootie. And Cootie Williams was his lead trumpet player, so he wrote that song as a feature for Cootie. And then it kind of, uh, there was uh, lyrics that were written for it, and it became Don't Get Around Much Anymore um, down the road. So anyway, we're going to continue now with another uh, pianist. And this, this pianist is probably one of the most important pianists in modern jazz piano, and really just modern jazz in general. And when I say modern jazz, I'm not... I'm not not saying avant-garde, but I'm, I'm not like exclusively saying like avant-garde jazz. I'm saying like modern jazz is like, you know, Alexa is a modern jazz musician because she's alive today. Emiliano is a modern jazz musician because he's alive today. And I'm a modern jazz musician because I'm alive today. So <laughs> everybody who plays now, their language, especially their bebop language, comes out of a few key people, one of which is Charlie Parker. Alexa and I have played some concerts dedicated to Charlie Parker and one uh, frequent collaborator of Charlie Parker's was Bud Powell. So Bud Powell is really one of the first pianists who takes um, Charlie Parker's language and transplants it onto another instrument like the piano. Um, you know, Dizzy Gillespie, for example, is one of those people who did it on trumpet. Um, the list goes on and on. But Bud Powell, uh, this is one of his most famous compositions. It's an original of his that's arranged. The, the composition itself is also an arrangement for the trio. Um, so what better uh, <laughs> instrumentation to play it than a trio? Uh, so here we go. This is Bud Powell's Celia. This is for our silver sponsor for tonight, David LeJewitt. Thank you so much, David. We really appreciate you. Um, and here we go. Here is Bud Powell's Celia.
Um, all right. There's Bud Powell's Celia for Dave LeJewitt. Thanks so much, Dave. David. Um, we are going to continue continue now with, I think this is one of the most sold CDs in all of jazz, is Errol Garner's Concert by the CD, uh, by the CD, Con <laughs> Concert by the Sea. Um, I think it, it's shortly behind Miles Davis's Kind of Blue. Um, so this album is very well known as are many of the compositions on it. Um, Errol Garner just had a really specific style of playing that kind of comes out of stride piano, but is not only stride piano. Um, he does use his, use his left hand similarly to the stride style, and remember like that means that he's kind of roaming from the bass notes, and he's playing the chord voicings as well. He's doing it all. Um, but what he does is he kind of develops something like of a bounce to his step in his left hand in the stride, and he... <laughs> plays chords every quarter note, similarly to what a guitar player might do in the Count Basie band. Um, so his trio had more of a large ensemble style, as opposed to somebody like Bud Powell, where the focus was really on improvisation um, once you got out of the, the melody. Earl Garner's writing and Earl Garner's playing really did kind of lend itself to like a gigantic trio sound. So some other arrangements like that are I uh, Get a Kick Out of You, Cole Porter, and what the song that we're going to play now is one of the most played tracks off of Concert by the Sea. And this is, of course, Errol Garner's Mis Misty. And we're going to dedicate this song to Kathy and Bruce Briggs. Thank you so, so much. Um, here is Misty.
We love that song. That's a great song. Um, let's venture over to Crowncast and see if anybody's anybody's chatting to us. Um, we love to see what's going on in the chat on Crowdcast. And Rob says it appears as though Alexa has been practicing this week. <laughs> as we as, as as though we all have been. Thank you. Um <laughs> thank you, Rob. <laughs> and yes, I was not pleased with that read. It was a little too uh stiff for me, so we we fixed that. Um anyway, love to see you all in there. Hi Lori, hi Les, so many awesome people. Danny is back on. Awesome. Ken Hayes, <laughs> great. Kevin Hogue says, hands together. I assume that's for Emiliano. <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, great. Love, we love the, uh, love the, the commentary. Thank you all so much. You have a couple questions in here in the chat, Stephen. Any upcoming shows listed? Oh, Gordon, do not worry. Uh, we have to come up with the next round of themes, so don't worry. We're, we're coming back. Um, We're not going anywhere. We're not we're not going anywhere. We just I just realized that we don't have any events up for um you know what? Maybe maybe Mora can, you know, while we're here, maybe she can just create the event while we're on Crowdcast and you all can go save your spots and you'll be surprised when you learn the theme later. Um and that way you don't have to go on online twice. You can just get it all done while you're online right now. Um and then the other question from Steve from uh Kevin. Sorry, from Kevin. Uh, can I read the question, though? Oh, Thank you. Yes. Um, s mallets versus... Okay, Stephen, have you had any <laughs> interest in playing the vibes? <laughs> Woo us <laughs> with some Bobby Hutcherson. That's hilarious, Kevin. Stephen, uh, any interest in playing <laughs> vibes? <laughs> I, I actually love the vibes. I also love the vibes, but the vibraphones you were just listening to on that intro music was Warren Wolf. Um the three of us were a part of a virtual recording with a good friend of mine, Benny Benack III. Um, Benny and I um, are putting out some New Year's Eve tracks to augment our um, Swing and Seasons Greetings album that came out last year on December 6th. Um, it's crazy to think that that's almost been exactly a year. Next week, I think, will actually be a year since we did that. Um, which is pretty crazy. Oh, also, it's um, Diego Lasansky. I mean, sorry, excuse me, Diego Washansky's birthday on December 6th, so we'll have to give a little <laughs> shout-out to him, of course. Um, so that was um, an arrangement of What Are You Doing New Year's Eve sans vocals, and once we release these tracks um, closer to the New Year's, I'll start adding the vocals into these mixes. Um, but great question. I love the vibraphone. Bobby Hutcherson is one of my favorites. Um, he's probably the first vibraphonist I ever heard. Um, through his work with the uh, SF Jazz Collective, and that opened a long hallway of, res of researching different vibraphonists through the ages, starting with Red Norvo, ending with nobody. I don't know. There's so many amazing vibraphonists. There's contemporary vibraphonists like Joel Ross, Stefan Harris, um, Joe Locke, some, and of course Warren are four names that come to mind immediately. But anyway, let's continue focusing on this instrument, which is the piano, as the show tonight actually is, <laughs> Pianists <laughs> Through the Ages. And we're going to continue with a, a composer and a pianist who's had a great uh, influence on me and I think a lot of musicians, but particularly my influence has been less on his piano playing and more from his composing. And this song that we're going to play by his is Nika's Dream. He also wrote such famous songs as Song for My Father, as Peace, um, and this man is Horace Silver. Horace Silver used to work with Art Blakey. Um, before Art Blakey, he turned it into Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. And maybe we should do a history lesson on that sometime because actually what happened is that Art Blakey paid off the sound man to announce the band as Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers instead of Art Blakey and Horace Silver. And that's why that band got to be known as the Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers. And then Horace went off and did his own thing and he gave certain musicians like Michael Brecker and Randy Brecker their starts. Um, and he kind of did similar work that Art Blakey did and just like bringing up the youth of New York City, of the jazz scene in America. Um, but this is one of my favorites. I have an arrangement of this that is on my septet record, Peace and Time. I have an arrangement of this that's coming out on my big band record in April. And it's one of my absolute favorites. I love how Horace Silver blends the like 
the Afro Latin vibe with the swing feel on the bridge. So we're going to play the song for you right now, and this is Nika's Dream. We're going to dedicate this song to the Nancaro family. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Another one of our frequent flyer listeners.
<laughs> All right, we are moving on, moving on, moving and grooving on to Dave Brubeck's Take Five, a classic, as we all know. And I suppose tonight I'll be Paul Desmond. I'll be Dave. <laughs> <laughs> who are, wait, who? Are? The, the blind guy or Bruce? Eugene Wright, the bass player. Eugene. Good old Come Eugene. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Emiliano is our very own historian here, as, as I told you last week. Um, all right. Here we go. This is dedicated to... Ken Hayes, silver sponsor tonight. Thank you, Ken. No. You are awesome. Yeah. No, okay. just over the band. Oh, right, all right, all right. Sorry. Oh, it is.
I love that song so much. So somehow it doesn't uh, somehow it doesn't get played that often. But you know what's funny is that this song has actually been on Emiliano's bucket list performing this song. So we're glad to be able to check something off of uh, his bucket list for sure. And the interesting thing about this album is that um, Dave Brubeck was one of the, I think this is the first album ever to have, the album that this is on is called Time Out, and it's the first album ever to only consist of songs in odd time sig signature. So there's literally no songs on this album that are in 4-4 four, four, uh, swing, you know, or 4-4 four, four straight, whatever, ballad. It's just all odd time signatures. Very, very cool. Um, so we're going to kind of skip ahead a little bit in our chronology and go play another song by another pianist who had glasses and Don't they all? <laughs> and this is um one of my favorite pianists of all time and this is my former teacher gil goldstein's his former teacher um and we're gonna play a song by bill evans right now bill evans was known for his um lush voicings his soft touch and if you're a pianist um like me. <laughs> um, one thing that Bill Evans did that was super cool is that he kind of changed the technique of piano. Of piano. You know, even somebody like Bud Powell had like very curved fingers. You know, very Winton Kelly, like all of them had like very curved fingers when they would play. Their, their hands were curved as like the picturesque piano technique. But Bill Evans literally just like had the f like flat hands. It's kind of crazy to watch. And all of the weight that he, u that, that he got out of the, the sound that he produced from the piano came from the weight of his arms. Um, really interesting tidbit um you know other pianists that have strange techniques are like mccoy tyner because he had like a thumb that was out like in left field like almost dislocated from his hand herbie hancock also like just sits super high up um er, it's interesting to me i don't know but anyway i think it's just super interesting in general but we're gonna play this song right now by bill evans um that he recorded many times one of my favorite recordings of this is live at the vanguard and this one is called Waltz for Debbie. This one goes out to Robin Ruth, Silver Sponsors for tonight's concert. Thank you so much, Robin Ruth. Here we go. Waltz for Debbie. Can we just disregard all of Yeah, so just stay in three, four.
All right. Thank you, Rob and Ruth. That was Waltz for Debbie for our silver sponsors tonight. Rob and Ruth, thank you so much. And I think we actually have a Debbie watching. So we had a double bonus there <laughs> for our fairy godmother, Debbie. How fun is that? I hope that... Um, Maybe maybe one day we'll all be watching and somebody will be, will be like, Waltz for Washansky. Oh, there you go, yeah. And it'll Catchy be somebody title. like somebody who like watched Emiliano, <laughs> you know, like a ch like a five year old or something right now watching, and we'll look at Emiliano in like twenty years. Wa Waltz for Washansky will be the new one. <laughs> maybe we'll write it actually. Maybe I'll be the five year old I'll that be gets inspired. Anyways, mm -hmm. uh, okay. What do we got now? What do we got up next? I think we are uh, on t on track to thank our bronze sponsors. Um, and we w yeah, so we want to thank all of our all of our people, you know, especially the Tarantinos and the Fife Geese who are always always here week after week. Um, they're the extra 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 frequent flyer sponsors because they've been frequent flyers for twenty eight <laughs> years, twenty nine <laughs> years. Um, can you please pull up the? Yes, thank you. Um, so. Our fabulous Quarantino assistant Mora, we want to give her a round of applause for just keeping us going week after week after week after week she makes it all happen she made an event on crowdcast for next week we have not decided what we're going to do for the next four concerts uh but we will have them up this week um but before you hang up or close your computers tonight you can go and save your spot for next week at the very least um and so the four bronze sponsors that I want to thank tonight are Gordon Webb, Charles Thomas, Rob Horton, Les Rose. Thank you all. You are so awesome. We love your chit chat in the comments. And it's just been great. It's been great. So we are going to close now with our usual something. Nope. I'm going to let the piano man speak. Hi, I'm the piano man. Um, like Alexa said, thank you so much, everybody, for watching, uh, for being virtually here, and as well as to Emiliano, our special guest for tonight. Um, we joke around that his last name is Washhansky, but that's not his real last name. We have oh bad news. God. He has an other last name, which is Lasansky. So you can go to emilianolasansky.com, check out Emiliano's projects. Uh, his um, see, He's got a CD out uh, with the Paragon Trio. Yeah, a couple yeah. years old. A um, couple of years old with Daniel Dickinson, a former classmate of mine at the Manhattan School of Music, amazing composer. So it's a great trio. Ch and Connor Kent is on yeah. drums, right? Yeah. yeah, awesome. So check that out for sure. Cre really quick question from Les Rose before we close. Why do you think nobody solos on the bridge? It's one of the greatest bridges to any tune. That's a great question. We'll have to do this one again, solo on the bridge, mm -hmm. because I agree. For yeah, Waltz for, for Waltz for Debbie. <laughs> Did I solo on the bridge? No, I don't think anybody yeah. solo it on. There's okay. another, there's another, I yeah, yeah. There's an, yeah. Oh, oh, on the bridge to take five. Oh, on the bridge to take that one. Yeah. Well, good, I guess that's just how they did it on the recording. Good call. So anyway, we've got a bunch of pianists that we didn't get to tonight because we just love playing together so much that we ended up soloing over <laughs> too much stuff. So we've got some selections from Kenny Barron, Thelonious Monk, Herbie Hancock that we didn't get to, as well as some other ones that I jotted down by you know, some more modern pianists. So I think that we might have to do another round of saxophonists and piano concerts in the coming months. So maybe we'll do that come December. Uh, who knows? So 25% of all proceeds from tonight's concerts and for the past, uh, I think, two or th two months have gone to um, New York City jazz clubs that have been struggling during the pandemic. You know, obviously, uh, well, Alexa and I started out giving to COVID-19 musician relief funds, 25% of all proceeds to those organizations who are helping musicians directly. But at a certain point, we felt that maybe we could redirect those funds towards organizations in New York City who had given us a chance to come up. So places like, you know, Jazz Lincoln Center come to mind as, as some places that have really been struggling, e even those really large organizations. So we're really so, so grateful to all of you that, that you're making it possible for us to give back in this way. So thank you so much for all of your support over the past 31 weeks, which is totally crazy. Um, we are looking forward to being back next week for a surprise mystery concert. Um, but before we go tonight, I think we do have to play one more song. This is by Thelonious Monk. And this is, we're gonna keep our tradition of ending with a blues. This is Thelonious Monk's Blue Monk. Thank you everybody once again. My name is Stephen Locke and Feifke. I'm Alexa Quarantino. Emiliano Washansky. 
<laughs> we'll see you again next week. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Unrehearsed. <laughs> Unrehearsed. <laughs> Unrehearsed. <laughs>
Thanks, everybody, once again. Uh, my name is Stephen Locke and Feifke. I'm Alexa Quarantino. Emiliano Washansky. See you next week. <laughs>